sort of where the state of the art was around 2002, in, in our view, anyway. This is an XUV <coughs> platform, um, really came out of earlier work with Humvees at places like Fort Hood and Fort Knox, where the soldiers who used those Humvee-based systems said that for the scout mission, they really wanted a smaller platform. So this was developed as a, as a test bed vehicle that could be used in the real world environment, uh, but it's, it's basically built with 6-2 money, not, not real you know, hardened vehicle uh, money. But over the years, uh, 16 of them have been built. They've been used for many, many field exercises over the years of other technologies. This display down here, the yellow line re represents where the planner is going to take the vehicle at that particular <coughs> moment in time. The other features around this, the red objects, relate to uh, no-go areas that are detected by the bot, like a tree trunk or something of that sort. And in the earlier generations, like the fourth gen, you'll see the, uh, the LADAR uh, actually actively panning around in the scene using something called gaze control, where it looks in the scene uh, where it needs to go next. There's obviously an over, uh, overarching plan of where you want to go several kilometers away. There's initial plan that's generated before the body even leaves using low resolution or poor resolution digital terrain data. And then when the vehicle confronts the real world and has to deviate from that path, it starts to look in the region that it wants to go to to regain the, the original trajectory. And that's all taking place in actually much faster on the vehicle than it does in this display. Um, the display was developed as an engineering uh, tool to help the uh, engineers visualize what was going on in the, in the robot uh, second to second in the next video. So for years I've been talking about tactical behaviors. This video provides, the, I think, the best instance I've been, had to be able to describe that. So this is the operator interface. Here's a trajectory that the vehicle is given by the operator. The vehicle goes off and executes that trajectory, and a, a target acquisition point has been located where you're going to be able to see a, a named area of interest, or a target, as the soldiers would call it, an AI. But in this instance, because the digital terrain database you're working with is imperfect, it turns out there are obstacles that are blocking uh, the, the field of view of the RISTA sensor. This is our new RISTA sensor, which was built based on the experience of Demo 3, uh, where we used high-end UAV uh, RISTA sensors uh, that did not function well in the ground environment. The heat, the vibration, you know, just overwhelmed them. This was purpose built to support operations in the ground environment. So initially, the bot goes to that initial point that was planned for it, having used its autonomous mobility all the way. And, but then we see the trees here are obscuring its view to the target. And it knows that because it, there's a laser rangefinder built into the system, and it does not get the appropriate range to the target when it gets to that location. So at this point, autonomously, it looks for another um, Rista point from which to do the target acquisition, and again, all by itself, moves uh, a distance to another point, which based on the local map that was generated using the navigation sensor on board, the vehicle believes uh, will provide a field of view to the, the target area, which in this case is this building, our robotics lab up there. And in this case, it did in fact uh, make that detection. And this actually works. I've seen it run in the field a number, number of times, and it's uncanny the way the vehicle actually displaces and moves itself to another location to find, find the target. So that really wraps up the briefing or discussion. I'm just reverting the form here. Um, no, no questions at this point?